Hi, welcome back to another writing vlog. You guys said you liked the colorful bookcase in the back, so I'm bringing it back for the intro to this video. If you're new here and you don't know me, hi, I'm Brielle. I'm currently working on revising my debut, hopefully, novel, which is titled Unraveling. It is a new adult fantasy with an enemies to lovers romance and dystopian vibes. And I'm currently working on draft two. If you're not new here though, you've been seeing me going through the depths of the revision trenches and it has been quite a journey so far. I'm filming this intro after the fact of this vlog and what I think you're really gonna see in this video is that finally, I feel like I gained the momentum that I had when I was drafting. I feel like I'm properly on a roll back in the project completely completely and I'm writing the most consistently I've ever written multiple times a week and I've started writing in the mornings before work. I actually don't know how much of that is in this video but I'll talk about it more in future vlogs as well because that has really transformed my relationship with writing and made it into so much more of a daily practice and I'm really enjoying that extra consistency. I've talked in past videos how I aspire to Alyssa from Alyssa and the Books, her level of like daily writing practice and I'm finally almost almost sort of starting to get there. The biggest change and update that I have for you guys is that this book now has a proper deadline. Because I booked my copy editor for July of 2025. And if you're not super familiar with the process of self-publishing, copy editing is typically one of the last steps of the process, followed just by like proofreading and formatting and such. So that means that this book needs to be pretty much polished and done by July if I want to stick to that timeline. Thankfully, the editor that I booked with does allow rescheduling as long as you give enough notice. So since I'm booking so far in advance, if I need to, I can move that date, which is comforting because at the end of the day, while I can do my best to estimate how long I anticipate certain stages of the process will take, this is my first time doing all of this. So at the end of the day, I do not know. And I certainly don't want to send off a version of the book that's just not up to my standards of what I want to release. There's no point in rushing the process. So I'm using that as a bit of a fire under my butt goal deadline. And we'll see when we get a little bit closer whether or not that's realistic. If that's not realistic, I'll probably have to push back when I was hoping to release this book, but that's okay. So for now, we're going to kind of pretend that that is a fixed hard deadline because I want that sense of urgency in a not toxic way to kind of motivate me to pick up the pace. And it has been, like I said, I've been writing the most consistently I've ever written. So I feel like I have a little sense of urgency. I'm also really excited to print the next copy of this book and to see a version of it in person that's a little bit thicker, more so like, I don't know, maybe this book is a good reference for thickness or even love theoretically. I would love to see a thicker version. If you don't know, I did get a printed copy of my first draft. So basically I'm bribing myself with external milestones. <laughs> But it's working, so like I really can't complain. I also have my eye now on several character art artists that I have discovered through people who have worked with authors that I follow. And I'm really excited to get character art made. I would have already booked it, but if we're being so honest, my pockets are a little stretched right now. <laughs> After paying the deposit for my copy editor and also because I'm about to move and have a ton of moving expenses, I'm trying to get myself to slow down a little bit. I don't need to book everything all at once, but I am really excited in a few months to book those character artists and like see little drawings of my characters that I can then include maybe in the printed versions of this book and the ebook. Basically, I'm really excited and I've never felt this motivated. I hope it's shining through the screen because truly I've been so lit up about this, about this book, about how much I'm loving working on it. I also have entered an extreme phase with this one cafe where I'm going almost every day and you guys will see that in the video. Anyway, that's been the vibe. We're gonna go ahead and get into this vlog, but the main update I want to give you is that we now have a deadline for this book. July 2025, it needs to be copy editor ready with a little asterisk that I could push it back, but we're gonna ignore that for now. And yeah, we have two months basically to try and finish draft two. All right into the video. I just tried to film this clip and I think revision is frying my brain because I was really struggling to put my thoughts into words. <laughs> But here we are. Hi, welcome into the vlog officially. It is currently Friday night and I have been tentatively, I would say, on a roll with revising. Things are moving along a lot faster. I have a little bit of a fire under my butt now and I'm just really craving making fast progress, to be honest. Not fast in the sense of rush, but just like writing more frequently, moving draft two along. I'm currently on chapter eight. We'll get into that a little bit more. It's a little less 
cut and dry than that, but I'm currently working on chapter eight. And chapter eight was the first scene that I've run into where there was legitimately a big gap missing. I had brackets and it said insert middle of scene. <laughs> so I had to write a lot of new material that I wrote a few days ago now. Something I am struggling with is I have all this new material in the middle of the scene now. It doesn't quite feel seamless with the rest of the scene. I think part of that is just the fact that I need to maybe like smooth the transitions. But I think part of that is also the fact that I am writing this new material many months after writing the original scene. And I can see blatantly how much my writing has improved. And this is kind of getting me in my head about all of the things that I've kept the same from draft one and making me question to make this book as good as it could be, would I need to like rewrite more of it? And that's a bit of a like intimidating thought because as it stood, I wasn't planning to do a ton of full on rewriting. I'm actually having a bit of a hard time even identifying what does need to be rewritten and what just needs to be tweaked. It's not as obvious as maybe I was expecting it to be. What is just like needs polishing needs to be maybe a paragraph moved around, a sentence reworked, and what needs to maybe be rewritten from scratch. I'm also running into the sort of kill your darlings thing of sentences that maybe I loved in draft one, that maybe I thought was fire. And now in draft two, maybe it just doesn't really fit anymore. Or maybe it's just not hitting as hard as I thought it was. And trying to debate whether I rework the scene to try and accommodate those lines to keep them in the novel, or whether they need to be scrapped and maybe the stuff that I'm adding is stronger than the lines that I previously loved. It's just crazy seeing how much you can grow as a writer in a relatively short period of time and how you can look back at a scene you wrote a few months ago with completely different eyes and just like have a totally different perspective maybe on how you would write it now. Another thing that I was not anticipating whatsoever about draft two and revision in general is that it has not been as linear as the drafting process. What do I mean by this? Drafting, I was very much approaching chapter by chapter, never going back, write a chapter, write the next chapter, write the next chapter. I thought that revising each draft would look like that as well. Draft two would look like starting in chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. And as I finished each chapter, it would be done for draft two. That's not how it's looking. In fact, it's looking like I go into a chapter, I make some changes, then I need to let it sit. Maybe I come back to the chapter later in draft two, make more changes, let it sit. It's looking more like multiple passes within this draft. I don't feel like any of the chapters that I've worked on so far in draft two are done for draft two. So that makes it a little bit harder to kind of track and acknowledge my own progress because I don't quite feel right filling in the bubbles for these chapters. If you guys don't know, I like do a word count tracking system where I like fill in a bubble when I finish each chapter. I don't feel right filling in those bubbles because I know I still want to go back. So my plan is I'm going to finish out act one, part one, whatever, with this first sort of pass. Oh, even though some of the chapters have gotten multiple passes, but whatever. I'm going to finish out act one and then I'm going to go back to the beginning and I'm going to re go through act one because I don't want to move on to later portions of the book unless I have at least a little more clarity on what act one is genuinely looking like. And it's hard because like realistically, I might need to look at those scenes again in a couple months. Like I, I might not have the answers right now and I need to be okay with that eventually, but I need to at least get to a point where I feel somewhat confident being like, okay, that's good enough for a draft two version of this book. Our word count has gone up thanks to some of the scenes that I've added so far in the first few chapters of the book. So we're now sitting over 77K. Originally draft one was 74K. So it's nice to see that we are adding at least a few thousand words already. Since I do want this manuscript to get longer, it is a fantasy, a adult, new adult fantasy. So I would like for it to be closer to 100K words. So that's the status update. Anyway, it's now Thursday night and I want to at least keep going for a little bit. And then I would also love to wake up early tomorrow. I'm trying to get back on the waking up early thing and take myself to a cafe potentially and like write in the morning. I think that would be so nice, like 7 a.m. Oof. Realistically, it'll be more like eight if we're being honest with ourselves, but I would actually love that. So I'm going to, uh, I don't even know. I think I'm at a point of the book that I'm just struggling with right now. And I don't think that going back into chapter eight or even the beginning of chapter nine, because the beginning of chapter nine is a mess and I need to scrap it all and write a new scene. That sounds like a lot right now, especially at 9 30 at night. So what I'm going to do and what I've honestly been doing quite frequently when I hit sort of a wall or I start feeling really intimidated or just like I can't do the hard things <laughs> is go back to my annotated draft and just start making small changes. Yes, it might not be the most monumental things that I'm shifting, but getting in there, seeing the draft improve even on a small level, knowing that I'm capable of making changes and they can improve 
improve the book. Sometimes I just need that to get me into a flow and then I can start making bigger changes or writing new material. But I've been starting off quite a lot of writing sessions, just making some of the small tweaks that I already have written in the annotated draft. I already know what needs to be changed. And a lot of times in my annotations, I even have the correction like that I wanna make, the new line that I wanna put there. So that's been a less intimidating place for me to start at times. So that's the plan. I'm gonna go grab my annotated draft and my emotions thesaurus, which I've been keeping on hand whenever I write. I think I'm gonna do some reading out loud to myself as well, just to get me out of my head a little bit because I'm having a hard time, I think, viewing the words clearly, if that makes any sense. watch this incredible video from Chris. You guys don't know Chris. How? Oh, I'm realizing this might be a little obnoxious. <laughs> anyway, I was just watching this incredible video from Chris where she was line editing her subscribers chapters. And I think that was actually great to watch right before doing this because it's helping me to try and analyze my own writing in the same way she was analyzing the writing in that scene and like helping me to critique myself. So if you haven't seen the video that she did, strongly recommend her and Lynn both did really amazing videos in editing their subscribers chapters, like literally author tube gold. I'll link both videos down in the description. I'm trying to approach it like that and I'm also trying to isolate sections so that it's less overwhelming. trying to like scrap from my vocabulary, from my thought process, is the idea of wasted work. I don't wanna worry too much about whether or not I'm doing things in the most efficient or logical way. I don't wanna stress about whether or not I could finish this book faster or be more effective if I was approaching things from a different lens because I have the belief that no writing is wasted writing. If I spend hours finessing a scene that ultimately gets scrapped or drastically changed. I don't want to view that as wasted time or wasted work because at the end of the day, every scene, every paragraph, every line that I edit or write or rework is strengthening my writing ability. Like I believe that every single second that you spend writing is strengthening your writing ability. And so I would much rather focus on that and view every time I sit down and do a writing session as a craft exercise, as much as it is me actually contributing to the story. If I have that mindset, no words are wasted words, no work is wasted work. And I'm not trying to say that strategizing around your writing process is a bad thing, but like free yourself from the pressure of it because at the end of the day, every time you write, every time you look at story from any lens, you are improving as a writer. You are changing your ability to revise, to brainstorm. You're learning more about how to become the best storyteller you can be and that's so much more important than like finishing the draft quickly finishing the book quickly or doing things in the right way so hopefully someone needed to hear that i don't know i think i needed to hear that i also feel like i am starting to just take prose more seriously and i'm really happy and grateful for that i feel like i am caring so much more about making sentences stronger making the prose itself stronger and trying to make the writing good writing and while i don't think every single line or every piece of this book is going to be good writing because i need to be realistic this is my first full novel. I'm glad that I at least have that desire to continuously improve my craft and I care about the writing being good, which is great because it's almost vulnerable to even admit that you're trying to make the writing good. I feel like in the past I would kind of shy away from admitting that I wanted to write things that were well written because it felt almost vulnerable to even state that intention and it felt easier to just be like well I care more about the story being the type of story I like and blah 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 and I feel like I was almost just like scared to admit that I really wanted to be like a good writer and for my craft to be good and now I'm really just embracing that and trying to like learn as much as I can and taking the time to go in in order to fine-tune my ability to like actually write in a strong way I don't know it feels good to like actually be really prioritizing that and leaning 
money into it and doing what I can to give everything that's on the page that level of care. Those are my late night thoughts. I need to get to bed and I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. I, by some miracle, convinced Mick to go to Village Well with me. So I'll be at Village Well tomorrow and that is making me want to go to bed so I can wake up. And that's the best, honestly, when you have something you're looking forward to so much in the morning that you want to go to sleep so you can wake up. I love that. Okay, good night, guys. Hi, good morning. Happy Friday. I'm about to pack up my bag. It is... 7 30 in the morning i am never awake at 7 30 i'm never awake before 8 period the fact that i am both awake and about to leave the house is crazy only village well and mick could get me to do such a crazy thing i'm actually so excited because it's been a really long time since i wrote early in the morning on a weekday so packing up all the essentials the emotions the thesaurus obviously and then my annotated draft is in the living room i would say the goal for today is finish some sort of pass on chapter nine i don't know if i'm gonna fill in the missing scene yet just because i don't know much about it and what it needs to be and i think it'll be easier for me to fill it in when i do another pass of act one and i'm able to look at it with proper context so we're gonna do at least some sort sort of pass of chapter nine and then hopefully the goal this weekend would be to do the next round on act one i would love to finish part one in the next like week and then be able to properly move into part two feeling confident about what I have so far. I'm using act one part one interchangeably. I basically when I drafted this book I broke it into parts based on the locations they were in. It somewhat aligns with the three act structure so I'm just kind of referring to those interchangeably but anyway we're all packed. Now let's head out or I'm gonna be late. <laughs> It is now the next day. We're gonna chat about how the writing's been going. As you guys saw, I went to Village Well yesterday morning with my friend Mick before work, which was amazing. I would love to try and go there or another cafe before work more because that just started off my day in such a fun way and I felt so accomplished already having written for the day. So really loved that. And I think I have a bit of a Village Well addiction because I was in fact there this morning as well. I'm obsessed and it's just like the perfect environment and I love their food and their mom so that might be my new go-to writing cafe. Oh, we should light a candle. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> So the plan changed since we last talked. So I did take a look at chapter nine at the beginning of yesterday's writing session and made some tweaks. And <laughs> honestly, I just got very overwhelmed. Chapter nine was in rough shape. Not only was like the writing itself definitely not the strongest, but there was also just a lot in the chapter that was wrong, incorrect, inaccurate, both in terms of like a plot and world building level and also in terms of like characterization and what the characters would believably say and do. And it's good that I now can see that and can see those inconsistencies and see what needs to be changed. But the thought of basically having to scrap and redraft that chapter or at least get in there and heavily rewrite was really intimidating for some reason. I also need to add at least one if not multiple scenes into the book at this point and I just don't know what needs to happen in those scenes. And so basically I hit a wall and I decided to go ahead back to the beginning of the novel and do my my next pass of act one leading up to chapter nine. If I hit chapter nine after this pass and still cannot crack it, I'm going to be okay with just flagging it, highlighting the chapter and moving on to the next part of the book that's clear to me. I'll probably still at least attempt to write that scene or scenes, try my hand at a few options, but if it's not coming to me yet, that's okay. I can always revisit that when I do draft three before I send to beta readers. That being said, for now, the game plan is to go back through act one, do another pass, polish it as much as possible, feel really solid in it so that going forward I feel a lot more confident and stable in where I'm at with the book, feel solid in the characterizations, feel solid in what's happened on a plot level, in a relationships level, and then 
will feel better going into the rest of the novel. So we did start that and between yesterday and this morning, like I said, I went back to the cafe this morning. We were able to do that next pass on the first three chapters of the novel. And this pass brought those chapters to the point where I would be comfortable with someone else reading it. I could put those chapters in the hand of one of my friends right now and I would not be mortified. And that is low-key a bigger accomplishment than maybe it sounds. I don't know, like to me, that is a huge moment and a huge milestone to be like, this writing is good enough that I would be okay with someone else reading it. Like that's pretty exciting. So the first three chapters now are feeling pretty clean, pretty solid. I think they're done for draft two, as far as I know, <laughs> unless I come up with further changes later. But I think those three chapters I feel confident saying are up to draft two standards. And I, I feel solid about them, which is very exciting. So I'm gonna continue with this next pass. I honestly think it was a great move to go back and kind of relook at this chunk. Like I said in earlier updates, I'm not being so precious with working chronologically this time. And I actually think it's working really well for my process because it also helps my confidence as I move forward in the novel to know that the beginning is feeling more solid. I'm trying to fight the urge to like send the beginning to someone because I still have not decided whether or not that is something I wanna do, share the earlier section with another person. Person. On the one hand, it might be helpful because if someone read the whole lead up, maybe they could help me think of what's missing in that chapter nine section where I know I need to add scenes. Like what is the reader craving at that point? Because I can't tell if it's more action or if it's more like softer, more relationship building moments that need to exist there. And maybe the reader could help me crack that. I'm almost scared that there's a little bit too much life and death going on towards the beginning of the novel and I don't want it to feel repetitive. So <laughs> that's what I'm currently like struggling with a little bit. So we'll see if I end up bringing in another pair of eyes to help me because before I send the full book to my actual beta readers, I do want those missing scenes to be in there and it needs to happen either now or in draft three, which will be a much shorter, less extensive draft, I'm hoping. I was watching a Katie Wismer video yesterday or listening to her Patreon podcast, I think it was, and she mentioned that draft two was her least favorite part of the writing process because it was the most grueling. And that was kind of validating to me. I feel like the first pass that I'm doing in draft two to me has been the toughest part. As I get to the more polishing stages where things are cleaning up. I find it a lot easier to edit. I enjoy the editing process a lot more because it's more rewarding. But that initial revision right after the rough draft where things are looking rough and you need to like fix it on a very ground up kind of level, I think that is becoming the most difficult slash maybe my least favorite part of the process so far. But it also feels like the most important step to actually making the book good. So I recognize that that work needs to be done. I understand kind of now why certain writers, like I'm thinking specifically of Chris and I think Lynn also has said something like this prefer to write a cleaner first draft and maybe like they're being a bit more picky as they're putting the words onto the page in their first draft I totally get that now like front loading that work so that you don't need to basically do such a heavy-handed rewrite when it comes to draft two and like change so much when it comes to draft two maybe in the future I'll be a little bit more picky with my drafting I already think I was somewhat picky like I wasn't leaving a ton of brackets or things that I like hated at the time maybe some of it is just the fact that I'm a much better writer now, which is great. Anyway, that's how I'm feeling. I would love to finish this next pass of act one in the next few days, like ideally by Monday night. So then I can make a decision about what I'm doing with the chapter nine section and then move into act two. Since I do have a timeline on this draft now, I'm trying to be mindful of momentum, consistency, making sure that I'm keeping moving, but also still doing a job that I'm proud of, which I feel like I've been striking a balance of recently. I originally was not planning to do a printout of draft two, but I'm thinking I'm changing my mind on that because I'm planning to take a break from this project during NaNoWriMo to work on the sequel. And I think it would be great when I go in for draft three to have a physical copy. Since I'll be doing more of a polish with draft three, it would be nice to be able to annotate once again and just mark the things that I do wanna change, especially since I'll have a month of distance from the project. I think I'll actually be able to see the project somewhat objectively or more objectively after a month break and look at it in a physical form and then be able to do that final polish for beta readers. Not planning to print draft three because I want to wait until I implement the beta reader changes to print another draft. So we might end up printing draft two. We'll see how it all goes down. Before we end this update, I want to show you guys 
something very cool. You guys may have heard me talk about Katie Wismer. In fact, I talked about her in this update. She's one of my favorite author tubers and I really love her books. And I just got these special editions of her novels. She's a self-published author. This was a collaboration that she did with a subscription box. And these special editions are gorgeous. This is a, what's it called? Oh my God. Not a, what is it? What do you call this? Oh my God. Dust jacket. Oh my God. But you honestly can't even tell because it hugs the book so tight. It's gorgeous. And it has like all this foiling. And basically this company, Luna and Lore, works with authors, like indie authors to create special editions of their books. And this is now a goal of mine. As an indie author, there's literally artwork in the books, full color and like a transparent sheet. Anyway, that's my latest obsession. Also underneath the dust jacket, oh my God. They also included in the box, a list of all the freelancers who worked on this, like the artists and stuff, which has been great because I've been able to add some new artists, very talented artists to my list of potential character art illustrators and people that I might want to work with. So I got the first two books in the series in these special edition forms and I'm obsessed. I now own this first book, The Marionettes, in three different forms, which is like so aggressive, but I just really love Katie. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys next time we write or talk about writing or do something writing related. Hi, good morning. It's Sunday. I'm about to do my makeup and it happened. It happened. Last night at the crisp hour of 5 a.m., I was struck by inspiration. My brain put together the pieces of what could happen in the part of the book that I was stuck on in chapter nine slash before chapter nine in that section where I needed to add things. I came up with multiple ideas, things that I think could work and basically realized that I could use this opportunity to build up the relationship between the other two characters in the trio that's not my main character. They can have a real bonding moment here, which is great because there was a beat missing essentially in their relationship because they go from like the female, side character being really intimidated by the male main character and like you know <laughs> they just they weren't interacting naturally at all to then getting along really well and actually having a lot of chemistry and the like main character ends up being jealous because of that chemistry and there was just a jump from that more like awkward dynamic to them getting along really well and having all this chemistry and i realized okay like this is the time when we can actually make that shift have him kind of come down to earth a little bit and make himself more approachable and then have them work on their relationship relationship during this time. So that was a huge realization. And then I thought about the fact that there probably can be two scenes or two chapters in this part. So one can be more action focused, additional conflict, you know, them dealing with the more environmental aspects of traveling. Cause as of right now, there's no conflict related to that really. And then the other scene can be more of a quiet relationship building moment. And I think between those two scenes, it will at least be a good start to what's missing in this part of the book. So I was so excited. I had little like snippets of ideas, even tiny little pieces of dialogue and context come into my brain. It was five in the morning. I was like in the middle of sleeping. I don't even know how this happened. <laughs> I think it was really, I got up, went to the bathroom and then I don't know if I had been dreaming about the book or just like in my half awake state trying to fall back asleep. I was thinking about the book and then I fully considered not writing down my ideas. I was like, I'll remember this in the morning. Like this is so important, but I thought better of it. And I was like, Brielle, if you do not write this down right now and you forget, this solution to the problem, like the big problem that's been plaguing you, you're gonna be kicking yourself in the butt. So I made the creatively responsible, but physically irresponsible decision of pulling out my phone and jotting down the new ideas in my notes app. Thankfully, I was still able to fall asleep decently well. Honestly, I think getting those thoughts out of my head and onto paper or my notes app actually made it easier for me to fall asleep because I was no longer stressing about forgetting them. But yeah, I mean, honestly, this has been a lovely reminder that sometimes there are issues that when you're staring at the page, you can't see the solution. You can't get the ideas. And sometimes you can't force that. And I think I made the right call going back to the beginning of the book so that I could maintain my momentum and keep my brain thinking about the project so that then in a time where I was like basically half asleep, my subconscious still had the book top of mind and could come up with those ideas that conscious Brielle was not able to come up with. And to be fair, neither of these ideas are like completely fresh. Like I kind of had in mind some of the elements, but I really was struggling to visualize how they would come to life. What would the content text be, et cetera. What got filled in for me last night was enough detail that now I actually feel like I could write that scene. And what also got solidified for me last night was kind of the purpose of those moments. Like what information could we reveal? What relationships are we furthering? What characterizations are we solidifying? Like why would I include those scenes? And that was new. 
That was not something that I really had before. So yeah, <laughs> I'm feeling really good about that. I don't think I'm gonna jump to that right away. I think I'm gonna let it simmer a little bit, still continue with the pass that I'm doing right now from the beginning. And then just when I get to chapter nine, I can take my hand at writing those scenes. That was the update I needed to give you guys. I don't actually think I'm going to do any writing today. I've been really consistent in terms of making progress on the book, which is awesome. But today I have some social plans. I want to work on my next video. So I just have some other stuff going on. I'm not gonna overwhelm myself by also trying to get words in. I'm feeling really, really solid about all the progress that we're making. I have a feeling this vlog is getting on the longer side. So I might wrap this up here. So if you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a like. Links to all my stuff will be down below, including manuscript critique services, my writing Instagram, Brielle's writing, my writing favorites, all sorts of fun stuff. I'll see you guys next week with another one. And until then, happy writing. Bye.